number six says consider the three functions below. So we've got a quadratic function, we've got our linear function, and then we've got an exponential function. This is similar to what we saw in the Desmos activity a few days ago. Um, the directions say label the quadratic function with f of x equals x squared, the linear function with g of x equals x, and the third function, our exponential function, with h of x equals 2 to the x power. Go ahead, stop what you're doing and label this. And if you want to put the graphs in Desmos, you can do that as well. Part A says, what's the domain and range of all three functions, assuming they continue in both directions? So this is going to be f of x is the quadratic, g of x is the linear function, and h of x is your exponential. And you know that because you labeled it on the graph. Um, so the domain for the quadratic function, we're thinking of the x values. Are there any stopping points going left or right? And then the range, of course, are there any stopping points going up and down? Same deal with the linear function. Any stopping points left and right? Are there any stopping points up and down? And then finally, with our exponential function, are there any stopping points left and right? And then finally, any stopping points up and down? And we can assume that this line gets really close to y equals 0, but never touches y equals 0. Um, then part, so you're going to write the domain and range for that. Uh, let's go through one together. So if we're doing the quadratic function, this is um, y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. Um, I'm looking at... We know that this is going to keep going on forever and ever and ever in both directions. So the domain would just be all real numbers. So you can write all real numbers. You can do negative infinity to infinity, however you want. Now, the range is a little bit different because obviously I don't have my graph at all down here. It stops right here when y is 0. So then my range would have to be y is greater than or equal to 0 because that's where all of my graph is up there. It's not gonna be down here. It's gotta be y is greater than or equal to zero. So those are your domain and range for that. If you look at the line y equals x, and this is g of x, I do believe, there are no stopping points in either direction, no stopping points going up or down. It keeps going up, it keeps going down, and there are no stopping points going left or right. So this would be all real numbers, um, or you can write negative infinity to infinity. Either one you're going to put for that for the domain and the range. And then I'll leave this exponential function up to you. Are there any stopping points going left or right? And then are there any stopping points going up and down? Oops, do it like this. So. It doesn't look like there's any stopping points left or right, but there is a certain point where the graph stops going down. There's a stopping point going up or down. Now, B says, which of the functions increases fastest over time? Describe how you know, and if you need to, you could draw a picture. So, we talked about this before. At what point, if you have all of these graphed, so you've got all these graphed, we know that this one here, your linear function, is increasing the slowest. The quadratic function, it looks like it's increasing the quickest. But then if I look, this red one on the inside, my exponential function, actually is increasing the fastest. And we can plug in a certain value of x if we want to do that to see what gives us our biggest output. So if I pick, let's say, 50 for my x value, well, and I have g of x equals 50, I get that I have my value right here at 50. If I put in 50 for x squared, so take out x, put in a 50, I get 2,500. And if I take out x, put in 50 here, I get a huge number. So algebraically, we can see that this one is increasing the quickest because with the same x value, this gives us our biggest y value. 